Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 286 on September the 1st, 2023. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, We'll cover the trades from last week on EOS Energy Enterprises, Citigroup, and Groupon, and we discuss three new trades on Carvana Company, DraftKings, and Pinterest. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. And for anyone that wants to learn how to trade options, I teach students how to trade options, not just study theory, with a combination of videos and live coaching calls. If you're ready to take your trading to the next level, send me an email to schedule a phone call. Now, the markets finished the week slightly higher. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 490 points, closing at 34,837 points. The S&P 500 Index grew 110 points, ending the week at 4,515 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week is recovery. No, I don't mean a 12-step program. In fact, there's no time for a 12-step program while the market is open. The type of recovery I'm talking about requires resilience, having a plan, and getting better. I heard someone say that they can't guarantee you'll make money when you start trading. However, they can guarantee that you will lose money. That is part of the game. Losing money is an integral part of your education as a trader. It's all about how much money you lose and what you learn from losing that money. No matter what you trade, make sure that you have a plan. That's my way of advising against trading purely from emotion. If your brother-in-law claims to have made a bunch of money in Apple stock, don't get excited and go buy Apple stock just because he did. If you make money in that scenario, you don't know why. And if you lose money, you'll blame your brother-in-law and you won't have the benefit of the education that you paid for. Sometimes you lose money on a trade and it might hurt your confidence. You might even lose so much money that you won't trust trading the money left in your account. That's when you have to look yourself in the mirror and remind yourself that you can do this. You might need to scale back the amount of money at risk on your next trade. That's okay. Just make sure that you execute your plan on your next trade. When I make money in the market, there will be a next trade. When I lose money in the markets, there's still a next trade. As long as you keep learning, and try to improve on the next trade, you will progress down the journey towards being a consistently profitable trader. And trust me, at some point you might need to recover. So just remember, recovery takes resilience, having a plan, and getting back on track. All right, let's move forward with the trade review from last week. We're gonna start off with a covered call on EOS Energy Enterprises, symbol E as an echo, O is an Oscar, S is in Sierra, E is an Echo. At the time, the stock was trading for $3.51 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the September 4 call at $0.75. Cents. That could give us a return of 35.33% in three weeks. Well, shares of EOS Energy grew $0.34, cents, ending the week at $3.85 per share. The call option that we sold lost $0.20, cents, leaving us with a net gain of $0.54 on the week if we were to close the trade out immediately. Now, we stand to more than double that profit if we stay in this trade and the stock rises another $0.15 in two weeks. There's no need to make any adjustments at this point. All seems to be working according to plan, so let it keep working. Next up, we have our credit spread on Citigroup, symbol C as in Charlie. At the time, the stock was trading for $41.24 per share, We looked at selling the September 41 half, 42 call spread at 19 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 31 cents in three weeks. 
Well, shares of Citigroup gained 36 cents, closing at $41.60 per share. The out of the money call spread we sold is now at the money. In fact, it has 10 cents of intrinsic value at this point. You would lock in a nine cent loss if you were to close the trade out immediately. However, we are still lower than our break even point, so no need to make an adjustment just yet. This stock has had a strong move downward over the last few weeks, so I'm not too interested in selling a put spread against it to create an iron condor either. I'm going to let this trade breathe just a little bit longer before making any adjustments. The adjustment will likely be adding a put spread if it's needed to stay profitable. And our final trade from last week was a debit spread on Groupon, symbol G as in golf, R as in Romeo, P as in Papa, N as in November. At the time, the stock was trading for $12.99 per share. I looked at buying the September 12, 13 call spread for 65 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 35 cents, or that's a 53.85% return in three weeks. Well, last week, I used the wrong symbol for Groupon on the show. I caught it as soon as I posted the podcast, and I can't easily change the recording once it's out there on the internet, but... Thank you to those of you who emailed me to let me know. I know you meant well, so uh, I was kicking myself that I couldn't go out. I, I even thought about trying to replace the file. But again, once you sort of timestamp something online, it's hard to really change it. So shares of Groupon lost $1.22 per share, closing at $11.77. The in the money call spread that we bought is now out of the money. And the spread has lost 50 cents if we were to close the trade out completely. And we can actually turn this into a short spread by selling the 12, 14 call spread at 35 cents. That would lower our immediate loss to 15 cents while still leaving us open for $1 of risk if the stock price were to head back towards $14 per share. Because of that, I would lean towards either fully closing the trade immediately or just waiting to see how this stock performs over the next week before deciding how best to move forward. I definitely would lean more towards the latter, which means let it breathe a little bit and then decide what your plan of attack will be. And God knows I've had a couple of trades this week that were quite profitable and then a, the market moved against me and I ended up, and one scenario, I ended up lowering my spread value but i ended up having to buy back the spread i had sold and then turned around and sold a lower spread at the end of the day the prices moved back up having to retrade that or lower really roll the the put spread lower ended up costing me my total profit on the trade so even though i didn't lose money i also didn't make money the only one that made money in that scenario is my broker which pisses me off because I don't really want them to be the uh, most highly profitable part of my trade. <laughs> but I had a great week trading. Um, I've been exploring a few, different, uh, a few different things that I hadn't traded before. And I'm also expanding into trading, going back to trading commodity options, trading some bond options, trading a bunch of different uh, index options as well. Once you understand how to trade options specifically, options are options. They react the same way across the board. There are even some currency options, currency future options that I've traded and that I'm going back to trading a bit more of. I'm a commodity guy at my heart. I don't care if I trade companies or energy or ag commodities or bonds or whatever. If I trade the option, I want it to make money and I'm going to use the same style because I understand options. So if there's anything you remember about this show, in case it ever goes off in the future, there's no plan for that yet. Or if you ever, if someone's like, what would you say about uh, Eric, the host, just say I'm a cheerleader for options. I am a fan of option trading. I think anyone who gets involved in the equity markets or any, any of these markets should understand options. And there are many professional traders who don't understand options either. But options give you an ability to slice up risk exactly the way you want. They give you an ability to magnify or get a, enough controllable leverage to really have, make better use of your capital. 
I can do more with a small option trading account than many people can do with a very large stock account. So anyway, that's it. We can move forward to the trades for the next week. But man, I love trading options and I love diving into new areas. And I'll tell you this, one of my students is responsible for reigniting the light, helping me see the light. He knows who he is. Shout out to you. Uh, let's see, should I even say your name? I won't use your last name, but Darren down in Houston, you made this week a whole lot of fun. And I am ready for next week because, man, there's so much opportunity out there. So I hope that gets you engaged. I hope everyone listening is like, man, I really got to get out there because there's some great option trades well beyond even what I'm able to share on this show. If you don't understand options, shoot me an email. I'd love to help you get caught up to speed pretty quickly. And on that note, I will be announcing something. We are now in September. This is going to be the month that I'm going to make an announcement that I think will make a whole lot of things more clear for several of you. I've already gotten a couple of emails from folks who want to be kept abreast of that announcement. So trust me, you guys are on the list. I will be sharing it um, and it's going to be awesome. So uh, this, th for this week's trades, we are two weeks away from the September expiration. So this is the final week that we'll use the September 15th expiration for new trades. And it was also a struggle to look at a covered call that made sense. I tend to look for, I want the stock price to be going higher and I'd like to be able to get a double digit return no matter what the amount of time is, whether it's two weeks or whether it's you know, going to be five weeks long. So this week, we're looking at Carvana Company, symbol C as in Charlie, V as in Victor, N as in November, A as in Alpha. The stock ended the week at $50.85 per share. I'm looking at buying that stock and selling the September 55 call at $1.85. This could give us a return of 11.8% in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $50.85 per share and selling the September 55 call at $1.85. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $55 per share. The break-even price is $49 per share. And in real terms, the stock purchase would require $5,085 and you would collect $185 for selling the option. Next up, looking at a credit spread on DraftKings, symbol D as in Delta, K as in Kilo, N as in November, G as in Golf. The stock ended the week at $29.64 per share. I'm looking at selling the September 29 half, 29 put spread at 17 cents, and that could give us a maximum possible loss of 33 cents. Now you enter this trade by selling the September 29 half put at 82 cents, and concurrently buying the September 29 put for 65 cents. This is a credit spread because we're selling the spread, and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $29.50 per share. The break-even price is $29.33, and in real terms, you'll collect $17 per spread that you sell and have $33 at risk. Our final trade on the week is a debit spread. Looking at Pinterest, Symbol P as in Papa, I as in India, N as in November, S as in Sierra. The stock ended the week at $27.66 per share. I'm looking at buying the September 27, 27 half call spread for 33 cents, which could give us a maximum gain of 17 cents, or that's a 51.52% return in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the September 27 call for $1.07, and concurrently selling the September 27 half call at 74 cents. This is a debit spread because we're buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $27.50 per share. The break-even price is $27.33 per share and in real terms, you'll pay $33 to enter the spread and your maximum gain is $17 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for sharing it with your friends. Thank you for just being awesome. 
I can't tell you how much I love getting email from you guys. I get uh, questions. I get compliments. Speaking of, I hardly ever look at the reviews of the show and I'm working on a video, like a promo for this show. And I looked at the reviews out there. And if you left me a review, man, I'm just going to say it outright. I love you. You guys are awesome. So awesome. Um, in a world that rarely gives online compliments, you guys, gave, you guys gave some great compliments. I feel great. I am super excited. I like. I've been trading for so long. Sometimes it's just like going to the salt mine. Like, okay, I'm just going to grind it out again. It's Friday night and I'm already looking forward to trading on Tuesday, which brings up another thing. Monday is Labor Day. Have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. The markets will be closed. We'll be back in action on Tuesday morning. So you've got an extra day to check out these trades, look at the prices, and try to understand what's going on. If you have any questions, definitely send me an email. Thanks again for listening and for following along, along with me on this journey. The journey is about to get even more fun. Trust me. So hang in there. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful weekend. And as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.